Alright folks, welcome to part 4 of the NASCAR 98 season. Let's get on with Sears Point Raceway for the Save Mart 300. And, yeah, interesting thing about this track is it's actually one of the real courses on the NASCAR schedule to this day. Although it's it's gone through a couple of name changes. They called it Infineon there for a while and now they just call it Sonoma. Sonoma Raceway. But it's a pretty neat little road course. It's in its original form here, which is pretty cool. Which in its original form, it's got that dip out of the top of it where it's got those extra turns. It's a carousel, if you will. Ooh, and I'm off in the grass. Ooh. But it's okay, it's okay. Everything is still gonna be okay. Yeah. I think I might be able to hang on to the car for this lap. I don't know if I'm going to get a good lap, but I'm doing alright so far. But yeah, this section here that I'm driving through, although they did bring it back for one or two seasons recently. But yeah, they just cut straight through the, this section now. I mean, it's still there. It's still there if NASCAR ever wants to use it. I don't know if they ever will again or not. And I'm in the grass after hitting the wall, so... I don't know how this qualifying lap's gonna go. But I will try. I will certainly try to make something happen that's not complete chaos. It's just a matter of getting through this turn here. As you gotta, like, really stop and slow it down. Ooh. I'm not expecting a good lap by any means. So what am I in store for, folks? Yeah, I don't see me anywhere. Nah, man. It's kind of pointless to qualify, I guess, but... Yeah, I guess a free practice lap. So yeah, let's just see what happens. I don't know if this is going to go over too well. And I kind of had a brain fart moment earlier. I thought Watkins Glen, it's another road course on the NASCAR schedule, for those who don't know. But it's actually in this game. I'm kind of, I, I forgot that it was. <laughs> yeah, that would be a penalty in real life because I made a pass for position before the lap even started. Ooh! I got into the Hot Wheels car there a little bit. But hey! Ow! Man, oh man! <laughs> it's all good though. We made a couple of passes so far. Oh yeah! Here we go! Oh man! Yeah, this is a pretty neat road course. I like this place. I just wish NASCAR went here a little bit earlier in the year because it's always brown and gross looking and dead whenever they go. And it's such a lush, beautiful green racing course. But they usually want to go in the summer when it's like scorched earth. Maybe one of these days I would kind of like to go to this track. It's all the way out in California, so that's quite a drive if I ever do. The longest I've drove for a NASCAR race so far was Talladega, which, living in Ohio, that was like a 13-plus hour drive. <laughs> but it was totally worth it. I had a fun time. Me and my friend Charlie went and seen a good couple of races that weekend. But hey, I'm actually not doing horrible so far. I mean... Sure, I'm struggling a little bit here with this sliding, slip sliding around, but I'm making passes. Ba I was making passes. But it's okay. Apparently, I'm a sheep now. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you know what they call a flock of sheep rolling down the hill? It's a lamb slide. <laughs> Yeah, 
But yeah, I'm, okay, yeah, I might be able to at least get back up to where I was here. I've got one lap to go. One lap to go, sponsored by Credit One Bank. But, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to come out of this with the top 10, but if I can at least make it out of here, maybe with the top 15, that's better than what my expectations were going into this, so. Especially with that disastrous qualifying lap. Oh, but that's a little bit disastrous. I'm flirting with disaster. Oh, man. I'm losing all my spots, people. What am I going to do? I, might, I mean, I might be able to get some of these back here. Oh, yeah, okay. Going through this carousel one last time. Aw, oh, man. Yeah, in these early games, I don't really do too well at Sonoma. Actually, one of the, uh, tra the I do pretty good on this course in Thunder 2003, but other than that, I don't really, I don't really have too good of a time getting around this course. Hopefully I can get around some of these guys here with a, just a final little stretch. Which I may be able to, just a matter of... A matter of it. Yeah. I'm not going to get back to 20th, but... This was certainly a race. This was certainly a race of all time. <laughs> but yeah, I'm probably going to lose a few spots in the points after this. In that disastrous Salt Basin Speedway or whatever that was, but... Eh, seventh. It's not horrible. Hey, a real course. That'll be nice, of course. Charlotte Motor Speedway, the Coca-Cola 600. Which, at the time of recording this, was the track they went to last week. But, that turned out to be a complete disaster because of the weather, and then NASCAR decided to call the race early, and they didn't really need to, and it was, it was a bit controversial. Along with the Indy 500 getting rain delayed, and then there was just a bunch of rain that pretty much ruined it. Which is pretty much par for the course for NASCAR. Rain happens a lot, and delays and cuts events short, and it's usually kind of disappointing either way. Maybe one of these days, though, I will go to the Charlotte Motor Speedway. I would like to go to a Coke 600, but... I'm not really too interested in going to the Roval. I know I said I'd like to go to Sears Point one day, but... The Roval in Charlotte doesn't really look like an exciting track to go to in person. Road courses, I'm kind of iffy about for the most part, just because... I mean, you wouldn't really get a very good view. You wouldn't be able to see all the way around the track, and that's what I like about other tracks a little bit more. There's some tracks where you're able to just see all the way around, like Bristol and Martinsville, and you can you can get some pretty good seats, and it looks like I got a pretty good starting spot here. Fifth? Oh, I should be able to do something with that, right? Let's see what I can do with that. 20 laps. I would say I might be able to at least lead a lap if I'm, if I'm able. I got a really... I gotta really try to work for it in this one. But the, uh, if I remember right, the competition's a little bit tough in this track. The green flag is out. Ooh, that's not gonna help. I killed some momentum. But I should be able to zoom me into the corners a little bit. I should be able to get some zoomies here. And yeah, there, there's old Terry. I'm gonna get around Terry the body in the cornflakes. No, there he goes. Wait. Ooh. Man, everybody's going a little bit crazy for the lead right now. But I should be able to out zoomy him into this corner and there I go. I'm going to lead. I'm going to lead the first lap. All me. I did it. Yeah. It's too bad, Jeff Gordon. You did not lead that lap. I did. But now I've got to try to keep these guys behind me for another 20 laps, pretty much. And 
Hopefully I can manage to do that. It's too bad there's no night races in this game. The uh, tracks... I don't even... I don't think this one even turns to dark. Though I could be wrong about that. I can't remember. It's like I couldn't remember that Watkins Glen was in this track and or in this game initially. Ooh, I've got a mess. I've got a mess of cars here to deal with. Even though I led the first lap, I don't know if I can get back to Jeff Gordon because once the leader breaks away, it's pretty much over. Though I could be wrong, I mean, I'm making some ground here. I think I might be able to do something. That would be cool, yeah, I might actually be able to do something. But sometimes the leader can break away and pretty much be the end of it. I've had races where I've just had to sit comfortably in second for the whole thing because... Because they just... I couldn't do anything. And sometimes that's alright. I don't have to win every single race. And NASCAR 98 is definitely one of the more challenging NASCAR games for me to get through, no matter what difficulty I have it on. Now, when I eventually do a NASCAR 99 playthrough, that'll pretty much be smooth sailing. I'll have to really figure out how to adjust certain things with the car and the difficulty to see if I can make it a little bit more interesting. Because I don't want it to just be me winning every race. I mean, I am trying, I am trying, folks. I'm trying to get back to the 24, but it... I don't know, he might actually have this one. I mean, I'm making a little bit of ground, and it's still early. It's still only lap 5. So I'll just have to see what I can do. Ooh, ooh that's not going to help my case. I can't just bonk the wall all the time. Yeah, he's already checked out a little bit. You can see that the uh, track map's starting to show just a little bit of stringy track between us. I love the track maps in these early games. I like how they color all the cars little dots and make little indicators for the leader and you. And It's fun. It's neat. Some of the newer NASCAR games don't really do track maps too well. I mean... I'm not really a fan of the uh, current track map design in the recent games, but... Eh. I mean, that's the least of the problems with the recent games. They're just not as engaging to me as... These, uh, older classic EA games that I grew up with. But, yeah, it seems like the general consensus is that... Games like NASCAR Thunder 2004 are the pinnacle of NASCAR gaming and EA Sports. But, I mean, it's a good game. It's a good game. Maybe I'll play it one day, but I'd like to play through some of the classics first, you know? I'd like to, I'd like to do that. So that's what I'm doing. Ooh, bonk. And I'm also bonking the wall. Oh yeah, it took me a while to figure out. Hang on a second. Doop. Yeah, you get a mirror in this game. You don't get one in 99. Now, I don't really want to use it because I prefer the track map, but... Yeah, it's kind of neat, I think. I don't think I've really... I may have shown off all the camera angles at this point. I'm not sure. Yeah, you got this one. Not a fan of this one. This one looks better in 99. Then you got this. And yeah, that pretty much covers it. I like the uh, zoomed out shot here more. Because you get to see plenty of the track while still getting plenty of the car. And... It's good stuff. It's good stuff. Oh, that's cool. I see those little Wendy's logos. Which it sure took long enough for them to finally start sponsoring some cars again. They've been kind of hanging around for a couple of years just doing some promos and annoying commercials. and Now they're finally sponsoring some cars. and It's good to see. And I like Wendy's. To me, Wendy's has the best chicken nuggets. And no, I'm not just saying that for... 
extra... I'm not being like, hey, Wendy's... No, no, I'm just saying, Wendy's nugs are good. They're my favorite chicken nugs. And they make decent... They make decent breakfast stuff, too. Although, when it comes to a uh, fast food breakfast, I typically like to go to Burger King to get their Egnormous Burrito. It's just one pound of egg and sausage and cheese and potatoes. It's decent. But yeah, Gordon is checked out. I'm pretty much just going to have to play defense to keep second place at this point. But you know what? If I can do that, that'll be fine. That'll be good. Make it out of here with good points day. And that'll be good for everybody. Everyone will like that. But I've got a gaggle of cars right behind me battling for what looks like third, fourth, and maybe fifth. So it's going to be it's going to be interesting for sure. And uh, th I believe yeah, this will be the halfway point. So this is definitely one of the longer races. This is probably going to turn out to be one of the longer parts in the playthrough. But that's okay. I'm sure some people will bear with me for this. I didn't I just wanted to get a couple of races in per part if possible. And sometimes you got these longer tracks like this one that take a few minutes to get through and then you got your shorter road courses that seem to take the least amount of time to get through. But it's all good. I'm just hoping I can get out of here with a second place finish or at least a top five. I don't know if, yeah, the competition's trying to gang up on me a little bit. I don't know how long I'll be able to keep them behind me, and then sometimes the car likes to break loose in NASCAR 98, so I just need to anticipate that. I always try to play this game knowing that that could happen at any second on the uh, normal tracks. And that's more so just with the game. NASCAR 99 doesn't do anything like that. But maybe that's meant to be a somewhat realistic. The harder you go into the corners, the more likely you are to break loose. And I'm not really, I'm not really too sure. I know that sometimes if you end up below the apron, there's a lot of stuff below the line, and that's where the track is the dirtiest and where most of the grass is. And you don't want to end up dipping below that and getting your car out of control. Because sometimes the aprons of the track are banked a lot different than the actual track itself. Like you got your flat stretch down there below the line, and then you got these high bank corners. That doesn't seem like a good time if you hit it the wrong way. Yeah, let me check that mirror again. I don't know if I can really keep five behind me this whole time, but I'm certainly going to try. I've still got a few laps left here to make something happen. And I hear my neighbor's lawnmower again. I don't like that because the microphone may pick up a little bit of it, but that's okay because he doesn't really take care of his yard that well anyway, and there's it just looks like crap. So it's kind of funny that he even mows it at all. Considering, <laughs> considering that everything looks like hell over there, and there's still a crappy house and a bunch of trash over there, and they don't even live in the house anymore, but they won't tear it down or anything. And yeah, it sounds like that's gonna pick up just a little bit on the mic. I can hear the mower getting just a little bit closer, and that blows. But knowing him, the mower will probably only stay on for a minute, and that'll likely not throw too big of a wrench into this recording session. I'm at least hoping that it doesn't. I mean, this is pretty much the worst thing I have to deal with when it comes to recording sessions, and I will admit the show must go on this time. It is getting a little bit louder, so hopefully this just, uh, hopefully, hopefully he stops the mower soon. <laughs> Like I said, though, he doesn't really do shit to his yard to really take care of it. So I expect that the mower will kill at any second. It sounds like he has already stopped with 
the the acceleration part of using the mower. I still hear it running though. But with five laps to go, I'm just going to tough it out. And I hope you'll bear with me, folks. I don't think it's going to pick up too terribly bad on the mic. But it may still pick up just a little bit. Once I get my house built, I'm hoping to well insulate it well enough that it's not going to pick up as much outside crap as, say, my parents' trailer that I currently live in. But it's all good. Four laps to go. I think I can make it around here four more times. And I will end the part after that fact. Considering this part's already gone quite long and I hear the mower picking up once again. And eventually, eventually I know he'll stop though. Because there's just not very much over there to mow in the first place. I mean, a lot of what needs done is weed eating and just a lot it looks like garbage over there folks it sucks to be neighbors with a slob but it's always been that way his dad was a slob when he bought the house 40 50 years ago and i will say there's a lot less junk cars over there than there ever used to be so that's a good thing <laughs> it's just it sucks that there are people out there that don't really take care of their stuff that well and I mean, I understand if you got your reasons and you don't have the means necessary, but... I mean, there's still plenty of little things that you can do. But, hey, I'll... I mean, I gotta live my life. I gotta do my thing. I'll take care of my property and my yard to the best of my ability. And I will certainly do everything I can to be an example and to not let my yard, my future home, look like crap. And I'm actually doing surprisingly decent at keeping the uh, competition behind me. Gordon has checked out to an easy dub. But I've got two laps to go. I think I might just be able to hold on to second place. And that'll be good. I think that'll be some good stuff. This is looking really good. This is, this is going to be alright, I think. And yeah, I still hear the mower. It's getting a little bit louder again. That sucks. That sucks. That really sucks. But... Here I am complaining about the little bit that that guy does over there, but it just doesn't feel genuine enough considering the fact that he only mows it like once a month. <laughs> it's like you bought this new $600 plus or probably even more than that mower and you only use it like once a month and you don't even mow everything over there. <laughs> but I digress. I'm on the final lap. I'm on the final back stretch here. It's the final, final, final countdown. It's not the final part of this playthrough, but it certainly will be for a few minutes while I let this guy finish his mowing. But coming around the corner one last time, I think I will be able to make it out of here with a runner-up finish. That is excellent for me. That is a good day. I was able to lead a lap, I'm pretty sure, so I'm still going to get some points for leading that lap, and that should help my situation out a little bit where I fell back from a couple of bad road courses. And I'm just trying to talk over the mower a little bit. That's going to get really annoying, but yeah, I'm back up to sixth in the points, and I will go ahead and end the part here, save the season, and hopefully the mower is not running when I record next time. This has been Fromark, and I will see you in part five.